This is the pattern of the the um, hoodie that we're going to be working on. Um, it's written by Nancy Fry. It's a free Ravelry download. Um, if you search for New Moon hoodie, um, you'll be able to find it. Written by Nancy Fry. I contacted Ms. Fry and she was gracious enough to give me permission to do this tutorial. So let's get started here. Well, I love this pattern for a few different reasons. Um, for one, I just I love hoodies. So and this is a perfect. A perfect um, pattern to do. I have been searching for different hoodie patterns and this one I found was very easily written. It's very easy to understand and follow um, the instructions for it. And also I normally when I print a pattern like this that has different sizes, this one is for size small, medium, and large. Um, and those are women's size small, medium, and large. Um, I usually take the pattern and highlight the sections that apply to the size that I'm going to be using. I didn't have to do that in this case though, because if you notice here, she already has the sections highlighted for you. Um, the yellow section is for sizes large and medium only, and the kind of green teal section is for size large only. Um, the white sections, of course, are where you stop for the, the small size, and that's what I'm going to be working on with this is just the the small size so let's get started this the pattern calls for you to start with the the sleeves most of this sweater is knitted in basically one piece with minimal seaming and you'll see as we go along what i mean by that with minimal seaming the sleeves are knit first um, separately, but then they're joined into the body later on. They're left live on stitch holders. Um, if you can see here, I have already worked one of the sleeves, um, and I've left it on just a scrap piece of yarn to keep the stitches live. And these are picked back up and worked back into the body of the sweater as you, you come to that point of it. Um, they're knitted in the round. Um, the directions call for you to use double pointed needles. I don't like double pointed needles. I am you know, I've never really used them successfully, so um, I'm not doing it that way. If you want to use double point needles, by all means, use them. That's fantastic. Um, what I'm going to be doing, though, is using a large circular needle and using the magic loop method to, to knit them. So if you're not familiar with the magic loop method, I will put a link to a, a good tutorial on how to do that, um, or you can just pick it up from me as we go through here. I'm not going to really explain how to do magic loop, um, but that's the technique I'm going to be using. The pattern calls for you to use um, worsted weight yarn. She uses the Vanna's Choice yarn, um, which is a really good um, yarn to use. It's nice and soft, and it, it's very economical too, especially if you're doing this for the first time and you're not sure if you're going to like how it's going to turn out. Um, the first one I knit, I use a, a different type of lion brain yarn, but same weight, and it turned out really well. This time, though, I decided to use something a little different. I'm using the Renat Sheepish Stripes um, for a couple of reasons. One, I kind of wanted to see what it would look like knitted up in a, a striped sweater to see how the stripes would work out, and it was on sale, so that's what I'm going to be using. So, we're going to start by casting on our stitches. For the small size it calls for you to cast on 40 stitches to begin with. So let's just find our end of the yarn here. And I'm going to be using a long tail cast on method to do this. Um, you use whatever cast on method you'd like, but this is just the one that I'm comfortable using. Get my yarn untangled here. Okay. trick that I, I picked up um, online to know, I always had a hard time figuring out how much yarn to pull out to start casting on my stitches. Um, a trick that I, I found online was to wrap your needle the number of times of stitches you're going to need. Um, in this case we need 40, so I'm going to wrap it 20 times. 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And then I'll double the length of this. And that will give me plenty of yarn to cast on the 40 stitches that I'm going to need. So, slip knot. Oops. 
place it on my needle. Slide it up and cast on my 40 stitches. spare you the watching me cast on the stitches. I'll cast them on and I'll join you back here in just a second. Okay, so 40 stitches are cast on the needle. Um, to start using the magic loop method, I'm going to divide these stitches in half. So let's find 20 stitches here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. There's 20 stitches. Okay, I'm going to slide this back on the needle a little bit and then bring my cord from my circular needle through in between those stitches to split them in half. And now this is probably the trickiest part of this is actually getting this started because you're going to join this in the round and try to keep from twisting these these stitches, okay? Which I have twisted here, let's see. Okay, so here's our 20 stitches on our two separate needles. The working yarn is on the back needle. Okay. I'm going to take this back needle and pull it out and begin knitting this first stitch. Now, the pattern calls for you to use a one by one rib, so we're gonna knit one, purl one. Okay, so. Knit this first stitch. Oops. Slide it off. And now, when I'm using magic loop method, I like to tug this a little bit to tighten it up. Like I said, this first row is a little tricky. The stitches are a little tight. I'm, I kind of tend to cast on a little tight normally, so the first row is a little tricky for me, but I'm just going to work in knit one, purl one ribbing, until we get to the end. One thing I can say about this sheepish yarn is that it, it is kind of fuzzy, so it, it does tend to split pretty easily, especially if you're using sharp needles like I have here. But I think this striping pattern turns out really cool, at least on the, the arms anyway. I'm curious to see how it's going to work out on the body, since it's a, the body's going to be a, a larger piece, the stripes will be thinner, so we'll see how that actually works out. I'm kind of anxious to see that. So we're getting closer to the end here. A couple more stitches. Four more to be exact. That's the end of the first section. Now this needle that we pulled out, I'm gonna push it back in here. And then once again pull the back needle out and then continue knitting in our one by one rib. So I will continue this and meet you right back. 
Okay, so I have finished the first round of the one by one rib. Um, I should have mentioned earlier that the you start by using size seven needles for this, um, or whatever needle to get you the proper gauge, um, and then you will work up to after we do the ribbing. The ribbing's on the smaller gauge needle, um, and then we switch over to size 8 needles um, according to the pattern. Um, and with this yarn, the, those size needles worked out for the gauge for me, so I'll be using size 7 for the, the ribbing, and then we'll switch um, over to size 8 once we start knitting the, the length of the, of the uh, sleeve here. Um, one other thing I wanted to show you before I start, we start here, I, when knitting in the round like this, it's helpful to mark your beginning and end of your row so that you know how many times you've actually gone around the circle. Um, this, I can tell where I started because my tail yarn is going to be on the right side here when I started out. However, according to the pattern, we're to knit 24 rows of this one by one ribbing. And in order to know how many rows I've done, I like to mark my starting row. So this first row that I've completed, I'm going to put one of these little clippy markers here on that first row, so that way I can count from that row and know how many rows I've actually completed of this ribbing, because I get easily distracted and kind of lose my place sometimes as I'm doing this. So I'm going to continue on around using the magic loop method, I'm doing our one by one rib for the 24 rows, and that will knit the actual cuff of the sleeve. So I will work on that. And when I am done, I will join you back here and show you the progress that we've made. The cuff of the sleeve is now complete, and I want to point out a few things to you here. First of all, those of you with keen perceptive abilities may notice that my striping colors are not the same as what they were when I started it just a little bit ago. Um, that's because when I was knitting, I realized that my pattern of my stripes was not going to match my other sleeve that I had already completed. So I restarted it so that I could get my stripes to be at least somewhat similar on both of them as I go. So um, next thing I've done is also moved my little clippy marker from the bottom here to the top of my ribbing because we're going to start the next part of the pattern. And I have switched to my next size up needles, the size 8 needles um, that we'll be using. You use the smaller ones for the cuff and then you switch to the larger ones for the rest of the of the sweater. Now if we look at our pattern here, the pattern says we knit the first 24 rows with the size 8 needle in one by one ribbing and then we're going to switch to regular stockinette with the, the size 8 needles. Um, we're going to do that for three rows and then we'll add our increase into here. I have actually already done the three rows, and you can see, that's why I moved the clip here, so I could count how many rows were there. But I've done the three rows of stockinette, and we're going to do our first increase. Now, she explains these increases. You're gonna do, each increase row is gonna have two stitches increased in it. Um, she does a right-leaning increase and a left-leaning increase. So, and she explains here, how to do it. Um, for those of you who are, aren't familiar, we'll add the right leaning increase and then we'll knit one stitch in between and then the left leaning increase from that. For the right leaning increase, we're simply going to lift up the, the bar between the two stitches and make one. Basically, it's a make one right. We'll lift it up and then we will knit it th through the front loop. For the left, we'll lift it on the needle and then we'll knit through the back of the loop. Um, it's pretty simple and I'll show you how as we, we do this here. Okay, so our very first increase is actually going to go right here on these very first stitches that we're, we're going to do here. Uh, we're going to make one right and then knit a stitch and then make one left. To make one right, what we're going to do is this little bar here in between the two stitches, if you can see that there, we're going to lift it up from the back 
with our left needle. And then you're going to just basically knit it like you would through the front any regular other stitch. Okay. Then we're going to knit that next stitch. Okay. And then we are going to make one left. Okay, and to make one left, we're going to lift it from the front with our left needle. And then we're going to knit it through the back of that lip of that loop. Um, what I find easier to do is to actually slide it onto my right needle and then take my left needle and stick it through the front. And of course this yarn is kind of fuzzy and it's kind of hard to see. And then knit it that way. Oops. Yeah, there we go. There's our make one left. That's our increase for the row. And then of course we'll just continue knitting stockinette all the way around. Now the n next thing I like to do with this, once I've made my increase, I want to move my little clippy marker to the row that has the increase in it. Because what we're going to do with our increases from this point on is they're going to be on every eighth row, which means we're going to knit seven rows after this in evenly, even stockinette stitch, and then on the eighth row we'll add another set of increases. Your increases in the following rows, you can see here, are going to be these rows here. In our next row, since our, our increase is actually on the edge of this row this last time, for the next row we're actually going to move in one stitch. So we're going to knit the first stitch and then add our increase, knit, and our left increase and then do our next seven rows worth of stockinette. And then the next increase after that is going to move over an additional stitch, so we'll knit two, do the right increase, knit, left increase. The next round we will knit three before the increase, round of that four, five, six, so on, until we end up on, whoops, camera fell over here, until we end up on row 124 with our last round for the size small, which is the size that I'll be making here. So I'm going to continue knitting my stockinette for the next seven rows, adding my increases, and I'll meet you back here when we're ready to finish off the sleeve with row 24. So the full length of the sleeve is now complete here. After the last round of increases, you knit seven more rows. And normally, instead of normally, you'd be doing an increase on the eighth row, but instead, on the final row, what you do is we're going to finish this up and we're not going to bind these stitches off. We're going to leave them live, just putting them on some stitch holders because we're going to picking them up later on and working them into the body of the, the sweater. So, the pattern tells us to knit the first five stitches. There's two, three, four, five. And then we're going to knit the next 14. And these 14 stitches, we're actually going to slip off the needle and put them onto a stitch holder. So let's knit the 14. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Now, instead of using a fancy stitch holder, I'm just going to use a piece of scrap yarn and a tapestry needle. And I'm going to 
slip these 14 stitches back off this needle onto, or back off the knitting needle onto the tapestry needle. It's three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine. Now the trick with this is not splitting the yarn. Make sure you're actually catching the full loop. Because if you split the yarn, then you're going to end up having some trouble pulling this piece of scrap yarn out later on. Let's see who is it. Right, this is the last one. Okay. So then I just pull this yarn up. And then just tie a square knot here, just to kind of keep it in place. Okay. Alright, and then we're going to continue on and knit the other 45 stitches that are left on here. And then once you've done that, that'll leave you 50 stitches the 45 that are over here and on the back, and the five that you knitted at first. Those 50 stitches, once you've completely knitted all the way around, you will slip those 50 stitches onto a separate piece of scrap yarn, and you'll end up with something like this. That looks like the sleeve, and all the stitches are on two separate scrap pieces of, of yarn with the stitches kept live only. And those are your two sleeves. So join me back in the next video and we will start the body of the sweater.